Why you gotta be mug me? I'm not the one booking this shit. You'll get your camera time, don't worry. Sorry. Somebody's a little upset right now, and I can't blame them. I apologize for the delay in this review, as I am still putting the finishing touches on this move from Iowa to Richmond, Virginia. Almost there, trying to get caught up on some business, trying to get some other stuff taken care of. But thankfully, this whole moving process is drawing to a very quick conclusion. Thankfully. Finally. Uh, so now it's time to talk about Money in the Bank 2013. You know, Money in the Bank is one of those pay-per-views that comes along in the summer. You know, it helps set the table for SummerSlam. But another thing I think this pay-per-view does for me usually is, is it kind of gets you revitalized in the sense that, you know, just like if you're a sports fan, you kind of look forward to the drafts. You always like the younger players to play. You like the rookies. You like the young prospects regardless of the sport. Uh, because you're always thinking about not just the here and now, but the future as well. And that's one thing I think that the Money in the Bank pay-per-view does for us as wrestling fans. kind of allows us to re, kind of reset ourselves, recharge the cells a little bit, and gets us a little excited about you know what's going to be coming down the pike. But as I watched Money in the Bank 2013, there were some things I liked about the show, and I'll cover that later in this review. I couldn't help but just had this overwhelming feeling, and I don't know why. But I just got angry and angrier as the night went along. Just a lot of things on this show pissed me off. And I don't know why that was, but it is what it is. A lot of things on Money in the Bank 2013 just irked the ever-loving piss out of me. Dear WWE, you have six championship belts. Six of them. Most of them really don't mean anything anyways. They mean even less when you have them defended on pre-shows. When they're not actually a part of the pay-per-view at all. And this is really upsetting to me when you have a group in particular like The Shield that has had a lot of television time devoted to them since Survivor Series last year. So why in the blue hell are the Usos versus The Shield for the tag team titles on your damn pre-show? That makes no sense whatsoever. You've got a group that people actually care about. Put them on the damn pay-per-view. Don't put them on the damn pre-show. There's no excuse for that, period. An individual character pissed me off on this show very much, and that's A.J. Lee. Not so much the fact that she's still Divas Champion. I don't... Yeah, who cares? That's whatever. It's more so her involvement with the World Heavyweight Championship match and her involvement with Dolph Ziggler. You know, when I look at Dolph Ziggler, I've thrown out comparisons before like Jeff Jarrett, and that got a lot of you upset. Oh, you know Jeff Jarrett, ah, oh, whatever. But the bottom line is, you cannot deny that when it comes to Dolph Ziggler, it seems like every chance that they have to make him into a star to make him into a big deal, to elevate him up the card, they decide to do something that takes the shine and spotlight off of him and puts it either A, on his opponent, or B, the person he's associated with. Now, for all that time he was sitting there and being associated with Vicky Guerrero, you finally broke him away from Vicky Guerrero just to give him another saddlebag and freaking A.J. Lee and Biggie Langston. What the fuck? This is how you're going to start the... Dolph Ziggler big face turn that was needed, that was necessary, is you're going to put this spotlight on other people because that's made him such a big star as a heel, right, dumb dicks? I can't believe the stupidity of the WWE with crap like this. You had a really good World Heavyweight Championship match between him and Del Rio. Yeah, we said it before, whatever. It was still being a really good match until you got to the incredibly stupid, crappy finisher where AJ Lee comes out for no dumb dick reason to fuck him over, cost Ziggler the match, instead of having him actually become World Heavyweight Champion and carry the belt, by God, for two or three months, you have him lose in this garbage way. And then he has to sit there and sell Biggie Langston's abortion of a finishing move? No, that's not good. This is garbage. And the A.J. Lee character is garbage. And the fact that they keep doing this shit with Dolph Ziggler over and over again, instead of allowing him to fully, once and for all, take the spotlight upon himself and either shine or fail based off of his skills and his skills alone, is absolutely ridiculous. And it needs to stop. Dear Philly wrestling fans, stop chaining boring 30 seconds into a match. Give it a couple minutes, please. Even though you ended up being right, you were foreshadowing the abortion of a match that we got between Ryback and Jericho. Um, yeah, don't chant boring within 30 seconds. You sound like tools. And believe me, if anybody knows how to sound like a tool, it's me. I sound like a tool all the time. So you sounded like tools when you're chanting 20, 30 seconds into a match. If you had done in this match just a couple minutes later, it would have fit perfectly. Start doing it then. Because, God, this match was terrible. And Ryback winning via a roll-up is god-awful. No, Chris Jericho. 
That's not good heel tactics. That's not the point. That's dumb dick WWE creative booking at its finest. You take a guy that was a monster babyface for a year that was plowing through anyone and everyone, and now all of a sudden you've turned him into this standard WWE chicken shit cookie cutter heel that has to beat somebody like Jericho, who couldn't even beat Fandango in his debut match at WrestleMania. Fucking Chris Jericho. Ryback has to beat via roll -up. A roll-up. The same Ryback who came this close a couple of different occasions to beating CM Punk, a CM Punk who consistently beats Chris Jericho. Now Ryback has to beat Chris Jericho via a roll-up. Shame on Chris Jericho for trying to defend that abortion of a finish. Shame on him. And shame for on anybody who actually bought into that crap. This was stupid and you know it. Worst match of the night by far. It was bad enough to me over the years to see the bastardization of the DDT to the point where I don't even really view it as that effective of a finishing maneuver anymore with everybody using it and people kicking out of it. You know, that's one of those moves that should be, that's it, it's curtains one, two, three. But now we got people kicking out of the perfect plex. And it's not as part of a great big story where you've got Curtis Axel wrestling a 25-minute classic with a John Cena or Randy Orton or somebody along that level, a CM Punk, you know, somebody at the very, very top. He's got people like The Miz kicking out of his damn perfect plex. No, that pisses off fans like me from way back when. Yeah, maybe we've had our time. I get that, but come on, that was the move his dad used. And yeah, maybe he's using it in homage of his father, but maybe tell him only use that in a match where he's facing a secondary guy that he's going to go over and let him use that as a finisher. Stop having people kick out of his dad's finish, please! To me, the WWE had the chance here at Money in the Bank um, to really kill a lot of birds with one stone. They could have had Mark Henry become the first true black WWE champion in their company's 50-year history. They could have had an excuse to sit there and catch us all by surprise by doing that. They could have given you a really big return match for SummerSlam. They could have given themselves an excuse because they know they're going to do it someday anyways. They're going to push Cena past Flair territory. He's going to win more than 16 world championships. We all know this. It's coming. So what a great excuse. Put the belt on Mark Henry. Have John Cena come back and win it a month later. Or if you don't want to go that far, you have Mark Henry beat the shit out of Cena. He wins by countout. He wins by DQ. Or Henry loses by countout or DQ. And it gives you a chance to either split him off or have him get a return match at SummerSlam. Anything other than what they did. Anything other than what they did. Now this the type of bullshit right here that set me the fuck off. How Mark Henry gonna sit there and dominate 90% of that fucking match only to have John Cena try to blend Pop Goes the Weasel when he got Mark Henry in that bitch ass submission move. Yeah, no wonder Mark Henry was scared. I'd be scared too. Probably thought Mark Henry was another one of his fat girls. Especially since Cena divorced already. He probably looking for his next score. Probably turn into men, motherfucker. Yeah, got me all pissed off. Mark Henry was dominant. Mark Henry deserved this. He should have been the first ever all-black WWE champion. But no, imagine that. The Breakfast Club had a little racist conspiracy going on. Man, I don't even want to fucking talk about this no more. Yeah, Mark Henry whooped that ass because that's what he do. That's what he do. He gonna be coming back for you, motherfucker. Hmm, I'm looking so pretty, yeah. Fuck John Cena. I understand that this may be a story that's going to play out later, but when watching the pay-per-view, they had the Wyatt family come out and take out Kane on Raw. So that left you with only six people in the WWE Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. I thought, you know, and I think a lot of other people did, they thought that Bray Wyatt was going to come in here and he was going to take Kane's spot and be the seventh person in there. Now why not? What a perfect opportunity to have a real shocking surprise finish to your pay-per-view. To your show, you've made the Wyatt family a huge deal. You've got two associates in that Wyatt family with Bray Wyatt. What better way to launch Bray Wyatt in a big fucking way heading into SummerSlam and throughout the rest of 2013 and frankly into 2014 than to have him take Kane's damn spot here, enter that money in the bank, and win that motherfucker. What a missed opportunity here in my opinion. You would bring in somebody like this, you put this much effort and energy into developing them, 
then you know what you do? You give us a big, shocking moment with these guys, and you instantly try to insert that guy into your freaking main event. You instantly do it. You don't half-ass it like you did with the Nexus. You don't half-ass it like you did with the Shield. You bring those guys in, and you put them straight at the top, in particular Bray Wyatt, and you have them walk out of this paper. What a shocking moment that would have been to have him win this Money in the Bank ladder match. But you didn't. But you didn't. Shame, shame, shame indeed. Or was it? Hmm. Now, I've said a lot about the things I didn't like about this show. There were some things that I did like, though. I'm going to talk about those now. Gotta like Damian Sandow winning Money in the Bank. You know, you had seven heels, basically. You kind of figure they were starting to turn Cody Rhodes' face, maybe. That's where they were starting to lean a little bit. I um, mean, you especially saw that during this match. That's where they're going to go, it looks like, with Rhodes going face and Sandow going heel. Perfect for both people involved. And Damian Sandow is the perfect type of guy to have be a Money in the Bank winner, especially from the WWE standpoint, because you know what they're going to do with Sandow. They'll have him carry the briefcase for a while, and they'll have him lose a bunch of matches. So the WWE gets everything they want out of a Money in the Bank winner in Damian Sandow. I was also very happy to see Curtis Axel, excuse me, Curtis Axel, if I could talk, retain his IC title. I hope he has a nice long run with it. What I also really liked on this show was with the raw money in the bank, they have been hyping up RVD for over a month. So they brought him in and, you know, I could sit there and say RVD matters now, really? No, he really doesn't. But they did reinforce what they've been doing with the vignettes and trying to pump him up for over a month and hype him up big. Um, they reinforced it by giving him plenty of shine in this, giving him a big, strong return. They didn't have him win the money in the bank, but they made his return feel like it was something that you should pay attention to, even though you thought that. Just saying. I really also like the way that they advanced the storyline between Paul Heyman and CM Punk on this pay-per-view. This shit was extremely well done, bringing out Axel and then having Heyman come out, and the way Heyman turned, magnificently done. The Raw Money in the Bank ladder match, excuse me, the WWE Championship ladder match being the main event, it was in the right spot on the card. This should have been the main event. The pay-per-view is called Money in the Bank, so the Money in the Bank match, in theory, most years, should be, should be the main event of the show. Unless you've got a match that has more importance to it going in like Cena CM Punk did in 2011, for example. Your Raw Money in the Bank ladder match should have been the main event, just like it was last year. It needed to be again this year. And ultimately, I know this pisses off a lot of people, but damn it all, for my purposes, the right guy won. Ring boners back, baby. Baby oils aplenty. Monotone, monotonous, boring promos. They're all coming back. <laughs> Always remember this, ladies and gentlemen. Always remember this. For all of us that dare praise Randy Orton, for putting over Daniel Bryan by tapping out a couple weeks ago on Raw. Always remember this lesson. The Breakfast Club will always, always get theirs in the end. Don't ever get it twisted. Don't ever make that mistake of ever forgetting that ever again. John Cena is the WWE Champion. Triple H is getting a shit ton of camera time. And Randy Orton is now your Raw Money in the Bank winner. What better finish there could be to this pay-per-view? I don't know. It was outstanding.